All right, guys, guess what? We're going to start another project. You might recognize this, maybe you don't. This is uh, about a 19, I believe, 35 Grunau. And uh, this is a little tabletop, pretty cool little radio. It's missing a knob, but uh, we're going to sort that out. It has one original knob. I've checked on, uh, for pictures on the internet, and sure enough, that is an original knob. So we're going to see what we can come up with there. And let's see here. Nope, the uh, paper's not on the back or on the bottom. And it's not inside. So I get to find out what model this is on my own. So before we uh, get too far on this, because we're going to take this apart now, um, we'll just get one good solid look at this thing. Like I said, it's a Grunau. It's got a pretty little wooden cabinet, a little square cabinet. Uh, this is the tuning over here. And this here is uh, the volume and the power, I believe. Although I think the knob is loose on it. I'm not sure. We'll check that out. All right, so let's take a look at the cabinet. You see there's one side right there. It's got some scuff marks here. A little bit of Howard's Restore would help dress that up. And some, some loss of finish on this side over here. Again, not too terrible. Some Howard's Restore will help that. A little bit of loss of finish on the top, plus the leftovers of what looks like masking tape right here. So we'll have to do our best to clean that up. The bottom of the chassis looks pretty clean and solid. The, this one screw is loose, but we'll take care of it. And uh, it really doesn't have any rubber feet like it should. In fact, the little metal, the little uh, nails that, are, that hold these, uh, these little square guys on here are poking through. So I'll have to tap those in and get them in place and maybe I'll put some felt, uh, I would put some felt dots on these guys. Let's look in the back here. Of course you see it's got the usual um, line cord that's been, uh, you know, been repaired to death. Let's slide the chassis out before we start looking at tubes and such, okay? To do that, we just tip her on the, on the back, tilt it up a little bit so you can see. Okay, grab a screwdriver and just remove these four screws right here. This thing's going to want to tilt out when I loosen the last one. It's not going to hurt it because it's sitting in a way that it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, all four screws are out. Let's get this, make sure this wire isn't going to be a problem here. Alright, let's lay the chassis upright. And usually with these, you just, uh, well, you take the knob out. That's a good thing. That's, that's going to... I need to remove that knob. That knob has a simple set screw. Let's go ahead and loosen that set screw. Slip the knob right off. Set that aside. Now, this radio should... There we go. slips right out very cool we are going to uh, we're going to look at this chassis a little closer in just a few minutes let's so let me set that aside while we look at the cabinet there's a couple of things I want to show you in the cabinet all right so this piece of grill work here I'm going to clean up and you know make pretty but there's really not much more to do with it than that except secure it back in the cabinet properly so I'm not sure if this was this, this was just some kind of double-sided tape or what. And then, of course, the grill cloth is shot, but it does give me a good representation of the kind of grill cloth I'm going to be looking for. Um, big hole right in the center. And it's on this piece of cardboard backing here. I might sturdy that up a little bit or make a new one. You know, we'll see what we come up with on that. So if you look inside this box, there's really not much to it. There's some vent holes in the bottom, and of course the holes for mounting, and the holes for the knobs, and you see the escutcheons from the back side here. I'm going to leave those alone. There's no need to take those out. This one here has got a loose nail. I might take care of that. But then you look up here and you see this 
it looks like some kind of a a ground plane or shielding or something and you got this little contact finger here that if I if I'm guessing right touches the top of the output transformer right here okay so I'm not sure if that just provides a uh, like I said a ground plane but that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense because the antenna is a long wire okay so I'll have to sort of figure out why that's there and you can see the remains of a Grunel sticker right here but really there's not much to do with this guy except leave it alone it may be just I don't imagine it's a, a a heat shield because it's got this electrical contact so who knows why it's there um, I'll I, maybe one of you guys out there who are smarter than I am about old radios can let me know is this some kind of a ground plane or for the antenna reception or, or what is it help me out all right we'll set that aside okay looking at the uh, the radio chassis itself you can see the speaker looks to be in real good shape. I'm not going to poke around on it. And these two dials here are in good shape. Those, that's excellent because both of those are things you don't want to mess with if you can help it. Um, of course, a couple of lamp sockets. They look, there's no corrosion there. There's no corrosion on any of this. All right, it's a little bit of goo right here. That's about it. It's probably coming from, this is maybe a, an interstage transformer or a capacitor. Who knows? There is, now this looks like either a choke or an, or an interstage transformer down here. So I will sort that out too. Let me pull these tubes off of here. Turn that around. And uh, let's, get, let's get these sort of squared away, okay? So we're looking right behind this box here. Actually, let's start over here on the tuning condenser side. I numbered these when the radio first came to me because I knew I'd be pulling these out. So the number one tube here, it's an, it's an octal. All right, let's take a look at this tube. This is a 6C6, okay? The number two tube, it's got a shield on it. Pull off the grid cap. These grid cap wires are pretty rough. They'll have to be replaced. And this tube, it says on the tube socket 6F7, and sure enough, 6F7. Okay, I'm going to leave it in the shield for right now. I learned from my last project, I'm going to test these tubes early on, and I'm going to test them on a, a, uh, a good tube tester. This one should be a 43 tube. Uh, pretty hard to tell, but it, let's see here. Let's make sure I got the right tube there. It says 75. So it says on the radio 43, and this says 75. So that's interesting. I don't know if they're interchangeable or not. So I'll check that out. Yeah, we'll take a look. Maybe they're interchangeable. Let's see here. This one should be a, uh, a 43 tube also, according to what's on the socket here. Now that's just what's on the socket. And this is a 43 okay I'll test check this one out too there's some tape on here it says filament cathode short so I'm gonna check this out and see what's going on with this okay I um, I really kinda like to check that before I try to run the radio and then this one here should be this should be a rectifier tube and what do we have here 25 Z5 interesting yeah yep 25 Z5 very cool you don't see those every day and you know before I do much let me put those across the tube tester and see what I got and then I will look some more at this chassis because uh, I want to fire this up and see if it'll play all right it's a self-contained unit there's no reason I shouldn't be able to put tubes in there bring it up on the very I can see if it'll play but if I've got a, a uh, a tube that's saying filament cathode short, that's the last thing I want to do is, is kind of bring it up um, without, uh, uh, without testing it first. So let's do that, guys, okay? Okay, guys, I got the tube tester warmed up. Let's look at the first tube. Let's look at the 6C6. Should be easy enough to find. 
Okay, 6C6. It's a 6.3, of course. JR, JR, 0235, 0, 2, 3, and 5. And let's see. 0, 2, oops. What did I do here? Zero, two, three, five, four. Okay. Bias is twenty. Bias is twenty. And the English is fifty seven. It's supposed to have twelve twenty five, so let's try let's see just look and see if it's good first. Fifty seven. Okay, in we go. Give it a second to warm up. Okay, I can feel filament heat. Let's check the line adjust. Yeah, that's right. It says to push P4. Whoa. That doesn't make sense. P4. Oh, it's got a grid cap. What am I thinking? All right, let's grab a grid cap, grid cap cable. I'm going to have to make some new grid cap cables for this guy. Okay, so that'll fit for now. I'll make a new cable. Now I'll use alligator clips. Okay, grid cap there. Recap there. Now, let's push P4. Excellent. We are at, well, it says good. Now, let's go. It's supposed to be 1225, so that means that is the, the red dot for the low, which is at the, just below 3000. Okay. Now, let's try. And we are getting, let's see, 11, almost 12. So, we're getting 1150. Very good. Okay, guys, 1150. This thing is good. We're in good shape on this tube. It's a 43. All right, let's find what I'm going to do that later. I want to do all the ones that are close on the, the scroll so that I don't have to search for them. I'm not going back and forth wearing the thing out. Okay, let's do the 6F7. 6F7. Now, it's, it's supposed to have an 1100, so that means that, again, would be the low red dot, if I want to read the number. Low. Now, let's check it again. I read about 950. So, 950 is not terrible. I think I could probably live with 950 in an old AM radio. It's probably going to work fine. Supposed to be 1100 and I'm reading 950. Okay, that's the pentode. Now, if we're going to set it up for the triode section of this tube, we're going to, it's going to be 5436. J, JR, so JR, and this is going to be 5436. Let me put this over here on the. the low red dot. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting about uh, about 280, about 280 on this tube. So on the triode, the 6F7 is getting about 280. Pentode was great. Pentode was about 950. It's pretty not too bad, but the triode is about 280 out of five. So we got a weak. Uh, 6F7. Let's look at this 43 tube. Okay, so the 43 I have to find in this book. And I've never used this book before, so we're going to give it our best shot. It's not a European tube, that's for sure. Forty-three. Okay. 
Well, that's kind of weird. It's showing, is it 25 volts? Okay, guys, I'm going to pause the camera, and I'm going to take a look up this tube and make sure I'm right here. Okay, it turns out the book is right. The 43 is a 25-volt tube used uh, in transformerless sets, of course, and that's what this radio is. I forgot to mention that earlier. It's a transformerless radio. Uh, you can tell I'm inexperienced at, at tube testing because I keep forgetting to do shorts check. But now this thing tells me I have a filament to cathode short. Uh, it's got some tape on there that tells me that. So I damn well better do a shorts check on this first. The book says on this tube tester that if any at, at any time any of them lights up, you know, if both sides of this neon lamp light up, well then it's a shorted tube. Okay, one is not lit, two is not lit. Three is lit. Four is not lit. You get the usual flashing. Okay, so it's number three. So we'll have to find out what it means when number three, when both sides of the lamp light up for number three. Filament to cathode. Okay, so here's here has filament to cathode. Filament to screen. Okay, so so far we have a couple bad tubes. Yeah, here's a 75. Let's look at that just for grins. 75 tube, that's a 6.3 volt tube. Six, six pin tube with a grid cap. All right, we're checking the triode section now. So 6.3, JR0205-2. Bias of 14. English at 31, okay, showing good, okay, we're looking for 750, so let's put this back in the low red dot, push this again, I'm getting about uh, almost 600, about 575, so 575 out of 750, yeah, it's not per, it's not like awesome, but I bet the tube works. Now we want to check uh, diode number one. And we're pushing P1, looking for a diode. P1. It says good on the diode. Okay. Now let's do for the other diode, diode number two. JR0305. 0305 dash two. 0 and 25. Okay. Good on that diode. Both diodes are good. So this 75 tube is a good tube. The last tube we're going to check is this 35Z5. So I'm going to guess that's oops 25Z5. Showing a 25Z6 but no 25Z5. Okay let's look in the book. Okay, 25Z5. Obviously 25 volts. We're going to push P3. That's for plate number one. I'm going to push P3. Oh, nice and good. Good and strong. For plate number two, it's... Alright, let's do it again. Okay, nice and good. Okay, the rectifier is good. What I need to do is find tubes for those that were bad and uh, test some out and see if I can come up with good ones. Let me go ahead and put these tubes in. I'm not going to worry at all about, uh, about shields right now. Let me just put the tubes in and uh, see what we get here. This 43 goes in here. This 75 doesn't matter. Get it out of the way here. Put this 43 in right here. Where the heck's the number on this guy? There it is. Uh, this is the 25Z5. I should, all I have to do is look at the structure. I can tell it's a rectifier. So 25Z5 we put right there. 
I tested the 6C6, but uh, it says it needs a 78 on the socket here. So I'm going to maybe plug a, go get me a, get a 78 and try that out. Okay, guys, I found a good 78 tube. It checked 1,325 uh, micromoles out of 1,450. So that's a pretty good tube. Let's go ahead and put that in there. This is a, uh, a nice RCA tube. Uh, it's got a nice, I like the looks of the structure on these with that mesh. It just looks cool. So anyway, uh, go ahead and stick this in. I'm not sure what the 60, the 6C6 is doing in there. It's not a good replacement for a 78. A good replacement for a 78, according to um, the, uh, the smart ones, is a 6D6. So that's not going to work. So wow, we come out of here with uh, having replaced four tubes. That's a big deal. I seldom have to replace that many tubes. But it doesn't really matter as long as we get it right. So wait a minute. Hmm. Well, the wheels turn kind of slowly, but at least they turn. Well, that's interesting. So where that 43 was, I need to look at the circuit diagram because I know there were a couple versions of this guy, but uh, I'm seeing three grid caps and I only have two tubes that need grid caps, so that should make me think. What I'm thinking is, there's a 75 here for this, uh, in place of this 43. They might have changed to a 75 in a later circuit. So, yeah, because he has written here what these tubes are. So I better look this, this up before I go doing any more, because he might have changed the tube sockets. It looked like all the same kind of tube sockets. I'm not sure why it would have those tube sockets in it if uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to try something and I'm not going to hurt it by trying it with the 78 and then I'll look it up because right now I'm set up to test this out and I want to go ahead and do that before I do anything else so we'll plug this into the Bariac I got power onto the Bariac you can hear the thing you know what my Variac sounds like by now. So let's go ahead and bring this up a little bit. See what we get here, okay? I'm just going to count it off to you. We're at 60 volts. I don't see any spike or anything like that. We do have a dial light on. The other dial light's out. 70 volts. 80 volts. We'll be hearing sound here shortly, if we're going to hear it at all. 90 volts. I hear buzzing. Okay. 100 volts. If we're going to hear anything, we should hear it now. It's trying. Now, let's do this. Let's take out this 78. I'd rather not give it up because I don't have too many of them, even though they're not, it's not like they're expensive or hard to get. And uh, we'll put that 6C6 back in there. Okay, let's try it again. 60 volts. 75 volts. 95 volts. It's, not, it's actually doing less than the other one was. Okay. 
Well, we have nothing for radio reception right now. Let me see what the deal is with the schematic. What's supposed to be in this radio. I thought I was doing the right thing by changing them. Um, back to what it says on the socket. Um, I'll be right back once I figure that stuff out. Okay, guys. Um, I put shields on. I checked the, the, the tube layout. And it goes 78, uh, 6F7, 75, 43, and 25Z5. Okay. That's the way they're supposed to be. I looked at the circuit diagram. I think we're good. So let me go ahead and bump this up. Give, give it some juice. We're at 100 volts now. Okay. You'll hear the ghosts of stations in all the mess. You can kind of hear talking, hear that? Doesn't go very loud. What that tells me is that um, it is picking up signal, it is processing signal, although it's distorting the living daylights out of it. It, uh, it, is, it does have audio, and so we're okay there. Basically what I think I'm going to need to do on this radio is what you have to do on all radios is do a, a full recap on the thing. Okay, um, you see this is going to be a fun chassis. These two IF cans, uh, they're going to be in the way of everything. But I'm going to have to replace this, of course. Now, right away I see a cut wire. That makes me nervous. I don't know what, what the deal is with that. I'll have to replace all these caps. And, of course, these dog bone resistors will likely be bad. The wire is uh, it's in okay condition, but some of it's been kind of messed with. So I'll have to pick it apart little by little and um, kind of see what's there. So let's not worry about this under here right now. I just wanted to just see it, take a look at it real quick. Let's start to get fragile stuff off this radio because the last thing you want to do is damage fragile stuff. So we know right away that speaker's got to come off. It's a cool little Utah speaker. These dial, um, these little, these little phenolic dials, they have to come off too. Okie dokie, guys. This looks like a really good place to stop. When we come back, we're going to start taking that fragile stuff off, and then we'll get about uh, recapping this radio. It should be a pretty straightforward project. I don't see any real big hassles. So next time around, we'll get started on that, and uh, we'll wrap it up for today. So from your Western Outpost in Salt Lake City, this is Michael. That's all for now.